So today's video is a little bit different as you can see from the title and that is my kitchen makeover. Now this is a video that has been in the makes for a long time. So when I made a very big decision to declutter my home, I was at breaking point. Not only did I have so much stuff everywhere, I really didn't like how my home looked. I wish I had a more aesthetically pleasing home. Now I'm not after a home that looks like it come out of an Instagram post, far from it. I did want a home that I could be in because I spend a lot of time in my home where I could feel comfortable and happy. Happy is the optimum word here. When I made that decision to redecorate my kitchen, I had no idea what I was letting myself in for, honestly. So I have ME, chronic fatigue syndrome, and in case you don't know, that is a condition that I have very, very little energy, amongst lots of other things, including pain and what have you. Also, I'm on a very tight budget. And when I say very tight, I mean very tight. So let's have a look at the kitchen. This is the kitchen that you're seeing on your screen now before it was red, along with the rest of the flat. The whole flat was red and I was sick of red. So it had to change. So the kitchen is just a room in the middle of my building. There's no windows, there's no doors. Although we do have doors opposite, which lead to the toilet and two storage cupboards. So for this makeover, I wanted to paint the whole room. I wanted to put some new flooring down and I wanted to paint the hallway as well. Welcome to my kitchen. So this is a tiny kitchen. You can see it's probably two meters wide by the same. That should tell you how small the room is. I think it's like about two and a half meters by two and a half meters. So it's really great because if I turn around, I can grab anything that I want. But also if there's more than one person in the kitchen at a time, we're all tripping over each other, let alone if the cat's in there. I can't tell you how many times we've tripped over the cat. So the first thing I did in this journey, and this is something I would recommend to you too, if you are embarking on a kitchen makeover or any makeover, is to declutter the things you don't want first. So that's what I did and I will link the video somewhere downstairs where you can see the filth and the growth I found under the sink. The next step in decorating a room is to create a mood board. Now, I never used to do this. I go willy-nilly, willy-nilly and never ever create one. But for this one I did, I wanted to get an idea of the look. So I was capturing some things and putting them in Pinterest so I could work out the kind of look I was going for. Because at this point, I had no idea what I want. I'm no good with design. I bought some white paint and I didn't look too much into it. I didn't realize there's like 3 million different white colors out there. So I just picked a white. And when it arrived, I tried it on the wall and I really didn't like it. So I ended up using that one on our ceiling. One problem with having a really tiny kitchen is there's nowhere to put anything. We had a whole bare wall where they didn't put any shelving up, which seems odd to me. There was a space under a side to put a fridge, but I've got a tall fridge. So we put that where the cooker goes, but when we got the cooker, we had a problem. So what we had to do was take a part of the side out. I've no idea if I was allowed to do this or not, but I assume I am because the, it was a separate piece of um, sideboard that was put there. So I assume that you were allowed to take it out. I figured this would be really easy to remove, but and I thought the silver thingy, the um, cover that goes between the two bits of sideboard would be easy to remove, but it wasn't. My husband here is making it look really easy, but it was Muggins here that spent an hour off camera trying to get that up. So once I had got it really loose, I got the husband to come in and pull it out and it come out really easily. So we have the sideboard up. Basically, this piece of stuff did not come away as easily as I thought it was going to. We did lose a tile in the process, but that should be okay. That can be replaced, but the fridge will be there anyway. So no one's going to see that. So that was one big job that I was a bit mindful of doing. And I was so glad that I got that out the way. 
I reached out to a company called Lick who do offer paints and I was really attracted to them. Number one, because I bought their paint and I really loved it, but also because it didn't have the fumes that comes with normal paint because I'm super sensitive to fumes. I asked them if they would be willing to send me some paint and they very graciously agreed and they offered me a consultation so I could get some idea about what I wanted to do for the kitchen, which was a godsend. Because as I said earlier, I had no clue what I was doing. So in looking to paint that area, I was looking potentially at three paints. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go with two and be super neutral or go with three, which speaks more to my personality. That's one thing that I'm really not keen on in the minimalism area, niche, whatever you want to call it, is that they love, but they love a beige wall. I don't know why. I love a neutral, but I love a bit of colour as well. So from the consultation, we came up with a plan. So we chose a white with a pink undertone for the kitchen walls with a green backdrop, quite a bold green. She gave me two options for the doors which was a pink or like a beigey colour. The pink for the doors was more boho, which is something I admire. So I went with that. Once the samples arrived, I wasn't really keen on the pink undertone in the white. I wanted more of an oaty colour. The bold green, I kind of liked it, but I wasn't sure because the room's so small whether it would be beneficial to us to have that in there. And I showed it to my husband and he wasn't keen on it. So I went back to the drawing board with them, said that I'd really like something a bit more warmer for the white and a bit more um, lighter for the green. So she came up and they came up and offered me some more colours, which I absolutely loved. So the paint I got from Lick is really thick and they do state on their website that they don't need a undercoat in most cases. But because my walls were a deep red, I really thought it's better safe than sorry and I had an undercoat paint anyway I also decided I needed to frog tape because I didn't trust my shaky hands I have essential tremor like cutting in without tape is a no-no for me and that proved to be a bit of a problem as we're gonna see later on I put the undercoat on and that went on fine gave that a bit of time to dry and then I started painting with the lick paint and it was nice and thick. It only, it kind of needed one and a half to two coats, I suppose, because of my walls were so dark before. It goes on a lot darker than it dries. And I would say it was, I only needed touch-ups for the second coat. I was really impressed with the colour matching from the sample because they send a, as I mentioned earlier, they send a sample out, which is a piece of paper, not actual paint. So I got to work putting that paint on and I did come into a problem when I needed to get up into the corner. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine So this is where the fridge is gonna go as you can see it is just here and I have a painted all that wall all along I just need to do another coat up in the corner there that corner there is really really difficult to get into I have this on a pole and I can I'll put a brush on the end and then I can go along like that it's really the only way this is the colour, it's a really, really warm white. It reminds me a little bit of the magnolia that I had in my flat in the 90s. It was a little bit more yellow than I anticipated. However, when I put the sample up against it, it's identical. See, above those cupboards, that's really, really difficult to get in there to paint. Because look, I can move all that stuff. We've got washing machine, getting up on that side is gonna be 
with my condition it's going to be a bit of a nightmare so what i've done is painted a bit into it as far as i can get into it i tried everything bar hoisting the cat up on a stick to get up there he refused to work that day there my knees are dodgy so i couldn't sit on my knees the um, ladder we had was not big enough and i couldn't get close enough to it and at this point i wondered how on earth i was going to finish this job but onwards and upwards i got on with the next part which was painting the back wall green somehow get to the top of that that is going to be interesting look at those colors this is going to be so great so it turned out it wasn't just that corner that i was having trouble getting to where i've painted the green at the top where the wall meets the ceiling i was having real trouble getting up there an absolute nightmare getting to the top of it and it's very very messy i don't know if you're seeing that i managed to put some tape in the corner so hopefully i can get a straight line you can see it's still red getting up in that corner is really really difficult for me but hopefully i can do a couple of inches more in and then we'll have some baskets there to cover it so at this point i thought we're changed tank i get very stressed out with things like this let me be honest with you i ain't gonna hold back on this but if something's not working especially decorate especially decorating wise when i am really worn out because of my fatigue levels i'd been at this for days and days i was getting stressed i tried everything i asked hubby he couldn't do it so i was getting even more stressed and i was like what am i gonna do and when that happens, there's only one thing I can do. I don't know. Let me know down below if you're the same. But I just had to come away from it, from it step away from it, and do something else. So here you can see I've got a bit of trim on top of my tiles, which I cannot take off. I did look into taking it off and replacing it, but I can't. All over, it doesn't have a very clean line. I didn't use tape. I should have used tape. I didn't. And so it's not cleanly done. So I think what I'm going to do is put tape there and put tape there and paint it white. And it's just, it's especially bad over here, as you can see there. And for the first time in a long time, I'm all right. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Things are not the same as they were a year ago, but all will be okay. Now this proved to be an even bigger mistake. <sighs> I don't know, but stay tuned because you're going to find out why. You will be with me pulling my hair out, I promise you. I decided at this point it's going to be worthwhile to just get a painter in to do the job for me. We didn't have much money, so I just hired someone to come and fix my mistakes rather than paint the whole place. So as you may recall from my earlier testimony, testimony, oh my God, did you hear that? Oh my God, I've been watching too much Johnny Depp. As you may be able to tell from my previous footage, I'd been painting this and I messed up because the edges were not straight. So what I did is I put tape along the top and painted it. And when I pulled it off, it had pulled the paint off with it. And it had done the same down the bottom. So I thought, well, I'm either going to have to put tape on the ceiling on the, or the wall to get it straight. I'll never get it straight otherwise. But I just gave in and called a painter in. And I just said to him, I've messed the wall up. I need you to fix the wall for me. So... He's been today, 
it's still wet, but he's fixed it up. Also up there, I wasn't able to get into the corner. It's all red up there still. He has finished, he's painted right into the corner for me. Mwah. He is a, he's a star. I will break down all costs in part two's video. So do subscribe if you want to see that video as well, where I'll go through everything. This is what we see when we look out. We've got three doors. I've started painting the walls, but still needs a lot of work. So that'll be done as well at the same time. So we've got Darren's shelf here, which needs to be moved. So he's going to have to declutter that. And then I've got this shelf here. It's got all my sewing stuff on it. But I am going to do a sewing declutter video as well. So technically speaking, there was nothing wrong with the floor before we started. Just a really basic, cheap lino down and I wanted something a lot brighter, a lot lighter. And so that's what I did. I picked up these tiles and I was absolutely in love with them. I got a complete bargain. But as we're going to find out, a bargain is not necessarily a bargain. But at this point, I thought it was the biggest bargain of all time. So don't ask me why, but I started off by cleaning the cabinets. Yeah. So if you want to put a new flooring down, clean the cabinets. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So once I'd done that very essential job, I then vacuumed the floor and washed it thoroughly because I wanted to give the tiles the best chance of sticking down. So here you can see me getting to work. I am putting those tiles down. I am rolling them with a rolling pin in order to adhere them. Yes, you heard me right. I used a rolling pin. It wasn't the best thing in the end to use, I don't think. Out of all the jobs so far, including the painting and getting stressed out with everything, the flooring was by far the hardest job in terms of the most taxing on my body. I was absolutely exhausted. I don't know what it is about bending over. Maybe because your heart's lower than your body or something. I don't know. This is exhausting me. It's really exhausting me. I had sweat dripping off me earlier. I look like a walking disaster right now. But, and so does my kitchen. So ignore the sides. I'd pull it down, loving, loving how it looked. When I had, uh, when I had six tiles down, I was just like jumping for joy. And I put the rest of the tiles down and I'd run out. I've done that, done that. I'm probably not going to put, I'm not going to fill those with tiles probably because the washing machine's going to be there. But these still need filling. But I've ordered more, so they're on their way. Luckily, they had more and they had more in the batch number that I wanted. So no great loss. I ordered another lot, but they took another week or so to come. And I didn't get footage of putting those last ones down. So you just have to imagine what that looks like. So while I was waiting for those tiles to arrive, I had an electrician come and change my lights. Now I did look at changing the lights. You see a lot of people on YouTube are always changing lights and they're not electricians. And I didn't look into it. I pulled the light down, looked at all the wires and thought, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm better off getting someone in to do this. So that is what I did. I've got a light in the hallway and a light in the kitchen. So I got them both changed at the same time. And, and I had an electrician put in the cooker. So I install it correctly. All these jobs, if I knew what I was doing, I could have done them myself and saved more money. With electrics, I think it's better safe than sorry. So the brink of the work in the kitchen is done at this point. So we moved on to the hallway. Now, normally I wouldn't have included the hallway in the kitchen makeover, but because there's no door and it's exposed and we're looking out at it, I thought I may as well do the hallway as well. So I sugar soaked the walls. Then I got to painting them and I was so, so so pleased to see the end 
of the red paint. The biggest thing it did was really open up the room, the area. It made it seem bigger than it actually is. And once I did that, I got on to painting the doors in that pink. And I was really, really nervous about painting it in the pink because I wasn't sure if it was too bright or too loud or too pinky, too, too Barbie pink. So here we are painting the doors. I've made a start. I don't even know if you can tell on camera, but the middle one, which is this one, I have actually painted in this colour. So it's only got one coat at the moment, but I am loving how it looks. Excuse that door, not, open, not shutting, but we need to declutter in there. That's a better idea of the paint colour. What are we thinking? Leave a comment down below and let me know if we're liking this pink colour one eternity later so i've been hard at it as you can see i have painted all three doors still got the end door to do yet on this one over here i've painted the trim on these two i haven't yet but that's why i've got the painters tape up there i was in two minds whether to paint the trim or not but i think it's going to make it look a lot grander it's just got one coat on at the moment so now we're moving back into the kitchen. It's time to put some shelves up. Now I've never put shelves up before and I was really nervous to do this. So I had this stud finder and I was trying to find the studs in the wall and it was playing up one minute it was saying they were in one spot. Then it was saying they weren't in that spot. Then it was saying there was electricals all the way across. And I thought, oh God, I'm just going to try it. Yeah, I'm kamikaze it. Started drilling into the wall. And I seem to be drilling into metal. And so I thought I'd better stop. So I drilled another area that was drilling into metal as well. I don't know what was going on behind those walls. But it was a sign that I should not be doing this. So I decided in my uh, wisdom, we'll call it wisdom, to get some, my brain's going, to get some industrial strength velcro because i had had that in my bathroom in my toilet where i had my shelves where you saw this video that shelf is held up by velcro so i thought it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine it's not gonna be fine as you can see we have one shelf on the wall and one not on the wall so we were sound asleep at 3 a.m this morning and i was awoken we both were with an almighty bang and it was this that came off the wall. I knew, I knew, you don't need to tell me I knew. You may remember that I had it up with some industrial Velcro and I could see that coming away and I kept pushing it against the wall to make sure it was secure because we had breakables on there. We had quite a few of these on there. We only lost one of these and one of my... One of my teapots, this one's okay. I've taken all the breakables off here. I've just got paper on there at the moment. That's going to have to come down as well. I'm going to have to rethink the shelf situation. I'm not sure whether I'm going to leave these in here or utilise these elsewhere. Maybe just have a flat shelf. The next problem is these strips. So when I pull these strips off, it's going to take the paint with it. This light's not very flattering, is it? There's not much I can do about that. I will just have to fill it with polyfiller and then repaint it. I had another shelf that we had had CDs on before and Darren had decluttered his CDs. So we put the shelf up on the side, which is where it remains today. And we've got all the glass jars on there. I don't need to get it put up on the wall, but that is a job for a handyman, not for me. Now I've got a conundrum and I need your help. That is, do I leave that shelf as it is? It's like a dark brown, almost black color, but it's got a few scuffs in that. So I could get one of those pens and just color it in. I think I've got some Sharpies in that color, so I could do that. Or, I've got this paint, which is a furniture paint. I could paint it in this, but it's like an off-white colour. Is that going to work in this space? I'm not so sure. Let me know down below, because in part two, 
part of the video is I'm going to answer your questions. So if you do have any questions about this video, leave it below and I will answer it next time. So let me show you where we're up to. We're not by any means finished and I will talk to you a bit more about that in a minute. So let me say that I absolutely love, I love how this looks, especially looking back at the footage from this video, early in this video, and seeing how different it looks. It is amazing, but there's still quite a bit to do. I need to get the shelf put up. I need to put hardware in. I need to put a mirror. I need to put some decor up in the hallway. I want to answer your questions and also give you a final reveal. So I mentioned one problem earlier. Well, I mentioned lots of problems earlier, but one in particular was the flooring. It wasn't the bargain that I thought it would be. The flooring has been down a good six months now and the tiles have been shifting. They did not adhere properly. The little corners have been coming off. They've stained very easily, even when we've taken the food up, wiped the food very quickly and they just look awful now. The whole makeover is proven to be a lot of hard work, and had I known this at the start, I may not have started, but one thing I would have done either way is to declutter, so you can check that video out where I did this before I started my kitchen makeover.